I'll get to I'll get to him in a minute, but we always get to bring just exciting content around what's happening in the digital world, right? The digital sales process and digital lead follow-up and lead management and all that stuff. So we've got more great content today. And if you followed us, um, we've kind of been all over the map, right? And with our podcasts and our webinars, um, we've had special guests on there. We've had different members of the Lead Helm team on there. And we've covered a lot of ground, right? We've talked about We've helped you build digital traffic logs in some of those sessions. We've gone through um, an opportunity scorecard, right? Where we really help dealers, right? Try to quantify and monetize how much upside and potential really sits inside the digital space right there. Um, Aaron, you and I did one a while back where we, we walked through the digital journey through the eyes of the customer, which I think was a really, a really cool one. And, and we've done some with, with some of our other, other partners, Scott Fisher, Sean Delaney. Um, and we're, we're talking about our evolution as dealers, right? As we gravitated and migrated into the digital space. So those have been fun. But today, today we're actually going to take a little bit of a step back. Right today we're gonna we're gonna go back and we're gonna really look at some of the fundamentals, some of the basics of digital lead management. So that's that's our topic for today. And I'll tell you at the end where you can go see some of the the ones that we've done in the past because those are all recorded and those are all available to you. But uh, as I mentioned earlier, today with me Aaron Barney, co-founder of Lead Helm, and Aaron, you've been with this organization and its various forms and iterations for you just had your 20 year anniversary this year 20, 20 years it goes goes by faster having fun right john that's still 20, 20 even if 20 years goes by fast that's a long time right most people don't stay at jobs that long anymore right people are kind of bouncing around but that's uh that's great and i think it's it's cool aaron look we we've worked together for the majority of those 20 years and so when i say it's fun to have a friend and a coworker on right this is like you and i sitting around having a cup of coffee talking about what we do every day for business and with dealers so this is this yeah. this is nice it's you're in a different space than i am right now physically but otherwise it's just like it's just like we're chatting so yeah i'm glad you're here it's gonna be fun to do this today um and let's let's just let's dive right on in before we start I have one little note for everybody that's uh, that's watching. If you would open up your chat, if it's not open already, uh, for a couple reasons. We're giving away a pizza party in there, and I think Christy's loaded up a little information about what we're looking for from if you'd like to be registered to win that. Those are always fun. We give those away, and people dig them. And we sell more bikes on the days that we give them a pizza. I don't know how that works, but it's always a good thing to get the pizza. Um, and also, uh, you'll see toward the end of the session today, there'll be some additional resource uh, and content links that go in there, and I'll, I'll hit those when we get when we get to the end. So, uh, with that kind of the the housekeeping out of the way, um, lots, Aaron, lots and lots and lots of chatter uh, right now around digital, right? Digital leads and response times and lead capture tools and so forth, and and I think it's for good reason, right? Because there's a tremendous amount of opportunity inside of our digital space. The customers are reaching out to us digitally right now. So that opportunity really stems from, I think, uh, an evolution that we're seeing both in business and in customer behavior. So maybe, maybe talk a little bit about what, what you're seeing there is because you're working with, you're working with clients, dealers, partners, and so forth every single day. So, so what's, uh, what are you seeing? Well, you're right, John. I mean, we're definitely in, in an evolution, right? And, and um, uh, you know, I think the some of the latest data that's coming out uh, just in all industries right now is pretty is, is alarming in, in a good way. Uh, and that is that 95, we used to always say 90%, right, John? But yeah. now, you know, we, we've kind of updated that. We're talking about how 95% of customers are starting their um, buying journey, shopping journey online. Um, you know, and I think, you know, you, me, John, we're no different than anybody else. Anybody that's, you know, on and, and, and listening to this now or later, I think we're all, we're all the same in the way that most of us, um, you know, start to do some level of research, uh, and shopping online. Maybe that's through social media. Maybe it's from, you know, we have enough intent to go to a website. Um, so, you know, look, there's no doubt, no doubt at all that today's consumers, um, are increasingly relying on internet to research, um, you know, compare and, 
and um, you know, and, and as they get ready to make you know purchase decisions. One thing, uh, no doubt about it, this includes uh, motorcycles and recreational vehicles, right? So this, mm-hmm. this is all part of it. And um, but the good news, there's a lot of good news. I think we'll talk about today because of that. But digital leads are a direct result um, of this shift in consumer behavior. And so I think now. More importantly than ever, I think it will continue this way. I mean, you've heard me probably say it before, but dealerships that excel in digital lead management um, can and will gain a significant competitive advantage. Um, and I think they're going to be able to continue or, or start, where, depending where you're at, to really stand out in, um, I guess I could call it a, a crowded market um, and, and capture leads that might otherwise go to competitors. I think... You can call it what you want, omni-channel, blended retail, I think it's the same thing, um, but it is more than ever about seamlessly accommodating customers um, as they transition between and back and forth between digital and physical spaces, your showroom, your website, um, and it's it's crucial in today's landscape. I think more than ever, it, you, you can't be just good at one, right, John? I think you really have to be great at both in uh, in today's market. No, I think that's that's a great call out, Aaron. Right? It's it's all about meeting the consumer where they want to meet and when they want to meet. Right? They want to be in control. Sometimes they want to do it on the phone. Sometimes they want to do it online, and sometimes they want to do it in person. And we've got to be. If it's omni-channel, that means we need to be omnipresent. Right? We got to be in all those spaces, and we've got to be adept at all of them. Uh, I think it's it's interesting. You mentioned research. Right. And I think a lot of times we do start as people. So if I'm thinking about um, a new boat, as an example, right, I'm going to go I'm going to go to dealership websites. I'm going to go to OEM websites. I'm going to go to different things and get as much research as I can. But at some point in that process, I'm going to switch from research to shopping. Okay, and that's when it becomes a lead when somebody makes that move. So when it happens digitally, Right. Whoever gets to that lead first, because most of the time customers aren't just putting out one lead. Right. Whoever gets there first, you earn the right because of your quick response. And if it's an appropriate response, you earn the right to start to influence that customer's journey. Right. Help them understand why you are the place and why your products is the right thing and why your culture is the right thing and your reputation and so forth. And you start to, you know, help shepherd them along that process. And we'll get into we'll get into more of that in a bit. But huge opportunity that that sits there. So let's be aware of that. Nine out of 10, nine and a half out of 10 of your customers are starting their journey. And a lot of them are going to be on your website. So once they're there, okay, website traffic is just that traffic's great. But if we don't have them a way for them to raise their hand and identify themselves, right, some type of lead capture, Right, whether it's a chat function or sign up for a newsletter or it's a credit app or value my trade, whatever it might be, we've got to have a way for them to raise their hand. So, let's talk about leads. Leads in general, um, definition of a lead is expressed interest. Okay, again, whether it's a phone call, whether it's floor traffic, or whether it is through uh, your website. When a customer raises their hand and gives you some information or they call you or they walk in the front door, they're saying, I'm interested in you, I'm interested in your product, or I'm interested in your history, or, I'm interested in your brand, or, whatever it might be. That is, to me, to me, there's nothing more important than that right now. Mm-hmm. Somebody that raises their hand and says, I'm interested in what you have to say. And once they do that, We need to be in a position to engage that customer in a meaningful conversation. Phone, front door, and digitally, right? So we have to get to the lead quickly, and we have to get to the lead in a meaningful way in terms of response. So to do that, right, we talk about this, 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 I don't even want to call it a concept, right? It's a science, right? It is leads under management. So wherever those leads are coming from, we'll keep it on digital because that's our our real focus today. I've got to capture and record that information because until I do that, I can't follow up. I can't start to build a relationship. I can't work toward a set and kept appointment, 
right? I can't measure my ROI on my digital advertising spend. I can't coach my individual people that are working with these digital leads. I can't do any of that stuff if I don't capture this lead in a system that gives me visibility to what it is and where it is in the process. So I think I have to capture it first. Okay, we're going to talk about the sales process. I'm going to turn it back over to you in a minute and talk about the life cycle of leads and all those things because that's a, that's a big topic. But somewhere you need to have this system, right? We believe Lead Helm's the best. Okay, It was purpose built for handling digital leads and the workflows required to move customers through and end up with more sales at the end. Okay, We mention in every educational uh, session event that we do, Lead Helm exists to help dealers sell more vehicles and do it in a way that the customers love. Great customer experience, sell more vehicles. Let's be great at that. So have the right system, okay? Ours or somebody else's, but you've got to record it. You've got to be able to access the data and understand where every lead is moving throughout the pipeline, throughout the flow there. So let's assume we've captured that lead now, right? Customer raised their hand we've captured it and recorded it, what are we gonna do now, right? Let's talk a little bit through the sales process, right? We've got a response. What's happening with the response times? Getting better, getting worse? Getting better, right, John? I mean, I think uh, the data shows us that, which is great news, um, much yes. different than I think what we saw three, four years ago. But yeah, response times are are improving. Um, and that's a good, it's a, it's, that's a good sign, it's a good start that you need that to start with for sure. So response time, and I agree with you, we're seeing that get better, okay? So we've got in a digital sales process, fundamentally, you've got a, you've got a lead generation and lead capture is phase one. I've right? got to generate traffic, it's got to raise the hand and become a lead, and we've got to capture it and put it under management, okay? We're getting better at that. The response time is better. The quality of response is getting better. Excellent. Then we move into phase two, okay? That would really be lead nurturing. Before we move into lead conversion, let's talk a little bit, Aaron, because I, I know dealers tend to underestimate the amount of time and effort to really be great in this nurture phase. So throw some data at us. Throw some data yeah. at us on that one. Well, I, John, I think what you said around, you know, what's most important and, you know, with response times and so forth. Look, I mean, I think the first part of all this is accepting the fact that, hey, when someone's expressing interest, that digital lead, as you mentioned, John, it that's the pivotal, pivotal, pivotal <laughs> moment of you know the customer journey, and that's where it first represents this big opportunity, right? Now we get to engage, we get to build a relationship with the prospect, ultimately, you know, um, convert, which is you know essential, essential um, as we talked about for for um, growth and success of of, of our dealerships, but. It's also important to remember that um, successful dealerships don't stop at initial interest, you know, but continue to really nurture. You said nurture. I love that word. Um, and that's that's to nurture them through the customer journey. This right now, John, the data at Lead Home, this is what we see. We do case studies, as as you know, uh, right? We we see the biggest fall off here. Um, yeah. It, I think one important thing and this is a strong belief at Lead Helm is that the goal of a digital lead is to get them to convert from your digital space to your physical space, to get them into your showroom, right? And that's mm -hmm. just part of the journey. We'll save that for another podcast when we talk about what happens when they arrive inside your dealership, because that is mm -hmm. still part of it. Um, mm -hmm. But you talk about leads under management. And before I, I, I got a little bit of math I want to kind of share with everybody, but you know, the the nurturing phase of a digital lead is crucial for several reasons. Um, you know, obviously, it's going to help us build stronger relationships and, and increase the likelihood of a conversion. But nurturing is about building trust, the uh, that relationship. The output of and the value of nurturing is, is that it's going to improve your conversion rates. End of the day, bottom line, that's what it's going to do. Um, but it really helps shorten your, your sales cycle. I believe right now it is the largest component competitive advantage um because well executed uh nurturing processes inside your dealership are going to set you apart from your competitors um because they're they're most likely they're not going to engage those leads as effectively um so it is about kind of maximizing you know those that roi but leads under management that you were talking about 
you know, leads under management, the total number of leads, potential customers that a dealership has that they're actively handling. Hopefully they're actively handling and nurturing. That is about the sales funnel, right? Your sales and marketing funnel. And when it comes to some math, the average dealer that we see receives about 150 leads a month. Well, of course, John, as you know, we see some on the what way other spectrum of three, 400 and some less, but mm -hmm. let's just yeah. use the math of 150 leads per month. Let's just say you get 30% of those leads to an appointment that shows up. So now they're in your sales funnel. Talk about that later on another time, but that means we got 45 customers of those 150 prospects, rather, sorry, converted to a shown or kept appointment, whatever you like to call it, the lead, we got it to, to a customer that walked our, to our, into our showroom and now is in our sales process. Mm -hmm. Doing the math, we now have 105 potential, right, customers, prospects that have still, as you said, John, at one point expressed interest. Okay, that's just after one month, 105. So obviously we talked about, hey, maximize opportunity. Crucial, we have a plan. We need to nurture those 105 leads, customers for all the reasons we know why. If we roll like that just out for a few months, you would mm -hmm. now have 150 new leads coming in, right? Mm -hmm. That's just specter at the same lead volume. Um, but now we have 315 leads under management that need to be nurtured. And over the course of time, um, these leads really add up. I mean, just doing the math over a year, you would have succeeded in your digital sales process in many ways, but you would have about 1,200 leads under management that need to be nurtured. So I think there's what I like to call that is the, the lead life cycle management. How are you managing leads from the point of initial contact or that experience? you know, express expressing interest through the various stages until they become, you know, paying customers. And there's three or four bullet points, John, we can move on here. But mm -hmm. I think one is it's about having and how do you get that done effectively? Well, first of all, you need to have efficiency and improve capacity, improving capacity. That's really, really important here. We learned that at digital lead performance. You got to have the capacity, bandwidth, whatever you want to call it. This is a great example of why having dedicated people to a process like, process like this is critical. And I talk a lot about that, but having some dedicated people, it's also a good reason to have the right technology um, tools or tool that's gonna help make this achievable. And look, I mean, it's, it's worth the investment. It's worth the investment in time, effort. Um, I talk about technology. I think a key question to ask yourself if you're listening, are you doing it and can you track it? Two important questions. Yeah. No, Aaron, I always wonder that, right? Because we ask dealers a lot of times, say, how how are you doing in your digital stuff? How do you feel about what, what you're doing with, with, with conversions? I feel great about it. Okay, why? And and can you and can you prove it? And if they can, great, they're ahead of the game. But most of the time, that's not really the answer. And I feel pretty good about it. I'm a little uncertain. I keeps me up at night sometimes. I'm like, okay, all right. So a couple things to pull out of that: relationship and trust. Right? We talk for fifty some years in the sales process, or longer than that about when, it, when you engage with a customer, we have to try to break down resistance between a salesperson and a customer and create a person-to-person -person relationship. And we do that by talking about what's important to that person, okay? Family, right? Recreation, family, occupation, recreation, motivation, animals, teams, all those things. People love to talk about what's important to them. We need to engage them that way in the digital space as well. We can't move from, hey, thanks for reaching out. Would you like to come into the store? Right. No, not yet. Let's build a relationship, right? We talk about people before we talk about products. So that's one, okay? That's why this nurturing thing takes a little while, right? Let's engage with them. Let's have a conversation. Let's get to know them, right? We know as trust comes up, value comes up, price becomes less and less and less relevant. Excellent. We can do the same thing in the digital space. The other side, <clears throat> I think in an ideal world, yes dealers would have a dedicated person or people 
to handle the leads. And But I think the reality of today from a staffing standpoint, right? It's hard to attract good employees. It's hard to retain those employees. So we see a lot of dealers regularly out of necessity, either from a budgetary or just a size or a lack of available talent that they have people wearing multiple hats on there. And that's okay yep. as long as we've got a system and we've got the lead under management and we've trained that person on what the digital sales process looks like and how we need to move that customer along. They can they can handle this and other things if a dealer's in that environment, if they have the right technology, because it does increase the capacity per human being that's involved in this space because it helps prioritize, it helps them understand the next step, right? It's a, it's intuitive and it creates uh, in, increased efficiencies there. So. It, it, but you're right. I think the big takeaway there, other than those, it takes a long time to hang out, right? We're not talking two or three attempts to talk to a customer. We're talking 10 or 15 attempts just to engage a customer. And then once they're engaged, we're talking about another 8, 10, 12 meaningful dialogues before we end up with that kept showroom appointment. It's a lot yeah, I there. Think, John, you know, you're, you're right, right? How many touch points does it take to make contact? You know, that data point of 10 to 15. And then even even then, you know, you've got several sometimes touch points over days, weeks to convert to an appointment and a sale. But a couple of things that can really help there, regardless of yeah. you know your structure. I think I agree with you 100 percent, John. Structure is something that is, I think, sometimes individual for that dealer and size and different things. Um, but I think a couple couple areas that a dealer can focus on regardless of that is. Always monitor the effectiveness of your touch points, right? You said track it, right, John? Monitor the conversations that your team uh, is having with customers because okay? those can make big impacts, quick wins. And, you know, obviously beyond measuring, you know, conversion rates, you know, it's, it's a matter of looking at kind of those key things and then you'd be able to adjust. You know, who have we made contact with? Maybe who have we not been able to make contact with yet? Um, making sure that communication is... Uh, the right level of communication to the right the right person, um, and so you know it is about kind of what we've always said, right, John? Inspect what you expect. This part yeah. of the process is really important. No, and I was it, the, the conversation history, and this isn't this isn't a lead helm product demo, but it's one of the I believe one of the coolest features of that platform is all of your phone and all your text conversations are recorded inside the platform, right? So we know exactly what our people are saying and what the customer is saying back and forth. If we have turnover, if we have days off, things like that, we always have the conversation history to go back to once the customer re-engages or once the burn is on us to outreach to the customer. So glad you brought that up. That's a good one. Okay. Let's just, we're, we're, we're take a, this is a little bit of a, of a sidestep, right? This isn't specific to digital right now, but assuming we're doing these things, right? Assuming that we've got our leads under management, we understand the digital sales process and we're tracking these KPIs. We're, tra we're tracking website traffic. We're tracking number of leads. We're tracking set and kept appointments. We're tracking conversions. We're doing all that stuff. The, where, where we really start to drive results is when we have a daily meeting to review yeah. all of our leads under management, okay? We used to call them save a deal meetings, people call them create a deal meetings, hot desk, dig meetings, call it whatever you want to, but every single day, your best and brightest minds in your sales and finance and BDC or internet department or whatever you may call it there, have to come together and we have to look at everything that happened yesterday, phone, floor traffic and digital. What happened yesterday, how many with yesterday's traffic and yesterday's appointments? What do we have on the books for today? And what do we need to do to move everybody one step further that's in that funnel right now? And the leadership team takes responsibility for all of those leads under management. Where they actually do the work to move that lead along, or they go coach the internet salesperson, or they go coach somebody on the floor, whatever it is this is where accountability happens right so we have to have we have to have the leads under management we have to have the kpis tied to let us know what's happening with those leads and then we have to meet on it every day because that's accountability equals results so you ran those meetings forever aaron I'll, if you can chime in add some color to that have right. at it 
amen to that, John. I mean, it's such, it's <laughs> such a, you know, behavior, right? You, you know, you, you know, you and me were talking this other day, you get to a point where you couldn't start your day without one, right? Mm-hmm. And it does so many more things, I think, in, in addition to what you said, you know, it fosters teamwork, it allows us to become more adaptable to what, you know, where we're at. Accountability is, is absolutely key here, you know, yes. and I say when you do, con- when, when you do it continuously and consistently, and you bring that team together, um, you know, you, you improve two things, customer satisfaction in many areas, right? Many areas. And a second one is your overall sales performance. And, you know, we're talking a lot about that. So I, I agree with you, John, if you can bring that showroom traffic log, that digital traffic log, your phone log, maybe some of the financing things in there, get that team yep. together, foster that excitement in the day. Um, it has a lot to do with the things we're talking about. How do you keep those things consistent? And I agree. It's a habit and you got to have the data. You got to have yep. the data to do it. Okay. All right. Let's, let's, let's flip over and let's, we'll, we'll share with you some of the findings that, that we see, right? So look, we, we work with dealers at various stages of their evolution. I will call it inside the digital space right now, right? We get some who are quite savvy and very good and are leveraged in technology and they have training and they have systems and they're doing their, their save deal meetings. We have some that are not really, and maybe just kind of on the receiving end of, of traffic. And we follow up a little bit and then we have a group kind of in the middle. Okay. You can look at it good, better, best. If you want to red, yellow, green, there's a variety of ways you can categorize those things. But I think what's amazing about this three levels of performance that we see from, from the good level. Okay. We'll use the same 150 leads Aaron, that you talked about earlier. Okay. Same leads, same ones you talked about. Everybody's getting the same leads. Good dealers, we're seeing about a two to three percent overall conversion on 150 leads, okay, on a monthly basis. So that's given us about three vehicles, okay. Okay, it's three we probably wouldn't have gotten if we weren't if we didn't have a digital presence. So we'll take those three, no problem. We start to add technology, we start to add training, we start to add some accountability, some data management, some KPI understanding, some coaching around those things, and we now we start to move into the eight nine percent close conversion on the same leads okay that moves us from three vehicles to 13 okay i just picked up 10 vehicles by paying better attention to the leads that are already here okay already here i'm not telling you to spend more money to drive more traffic to get more leads i'm saying the leads are already here we can do more with the leads that we have and then we get to the 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 best level And we start to see 13, 14, 15, and sometimes higher percent. And that puts us in a 20 neighborhood. Okay. So just guys do some quick math, ladies and gentlemen on the call, right? Think about that. Even if we use the 10 Delta on a monthly basis Mm -hmm. times 12 months, I got 120 extra vehicles, plug in your average gross profit front end and back end and multiply it by 120 and see what gross profit potential, not not gross sales, not revenue, gross profit. See, quantify that just for your own for your own edification at that point and see because this is where ROI starts to come from. You spend money to drive traffic to the door, to the phone, and to the website. Let's make sure we're understanding are we getting a good return on that piece of it. So I don't, you can what do you, Aaron, you see these, you, you work when we bring dealers on and you case study them. This is where some of that two to 3% data comes from. And then we start to, we start to move them up, right? This, this, this success plan. And we start to see these numbers change. I think it's four key areas. I think it's, and I, and I, and I, and I say this, I, th- I say this because I think it's important. I think that, you know, going back to some basics and keeping things simple is all part of what we talked about today. You know, it's not about making it super complex. And I think four key areas that I see when we case study dealers all over the country and we look at the difference between that 3% and that 13% is part of it's some lead gen. Okay. So yeah, same amount of leads, but some of it's, you know, understanding your lead sources and so forth. That's that's part of it, but it is about lead response. We talked about that, seeing a lot of improvements there. Lead nurturing, right? And, And how many leads are under management and what we're doing with those. And then quality of communication where, you know, um, training and coaching and we talk about that conversation, monitoring what conversations are happening, those things um, have a lot to do with it. Dealers that continuously monitor and measure this type of performance we're talking about, 
in both digital marketing, digital sales process efforts, um, tracking those KPIs. I think that's what really sets sets them, you know, kind of apart um, in most areas. And you know, um, before you kind of close close this down, John, you know, I think to kind of sum up a lot of things, there's there's a common phrase that I I hear a lot, and it's um, probably the most dangerous phrase I think I hear in our industry. And it's, we've always done it that way. Mm. We've always done it that way. And we talked about evolution. We talked about 95% 95 of customers starting their journey online. And I think um, one, accepting change is vital to our growth in this industry. I think that's one thing. I think a second thing is, you know, our customers buying behaviors have changed and they continue to evolve which again goes back to why we need to. And I think there's a big upside that you said, John, about those incremental increase in sales is, is that you and me were, were talking this other day. If, if you don't do it, another dealer will. I mean, they're going to buy somewhere, right? That, that gap, yes. they're going to buy somewhere. So yes. um, I'll say this again. I, always, I, I say it a lot. We, we have to change the way we handle customers. We have to change the way we do business, right? Or, or our customers will change who they decide, you know, to buy from. So there's a lot of importance and, and urgency behind some of the things we're talking about. There's, no, Aaron, those are, that's, those are great keys, right? Got to get the leads, got to respond to leads, got to stay with the leads for a long time, have to have communication, have to have that data. But I think, uh, look, businesses that are great for a long time continually reinvent themselves. And, and we're in a situation right now that I'm not saying dealers are going to perish if they don't get great at digital, but we're not going to be as successful as we could be. And we've got, right, we've got the skills, the ability, the knowledge to do this really, really well if if dealers want to embrace that. So, um, Aaron, I'm going to I'm going to wrap up a little bit, but thank you. Great, great content. Love doing these together. Um, you'll see. Everybody, you'll see some things in the chat here. You've got a couple a couple actions you can take should you choose to do so. Um, Aaron has mentioned these case studies. Okay, um, normally we would do four ninety nine charge four ninety nine for one of those unless it was part of a client um, um, investigation. I guess somebody that we're trying to uh, trying to bring on board. But uh, essentially, it's a digital sales process assessment. Uh, for those of you that are tuned in today, we are offering that at no charge. Uh, so there'll be something in the chat. There'll be a link there. If you're interested, click on that link and we'll basically dive in and, and we'll look at your operation and we'll come back with our findings and some recommendations at this is where you are now. And these are some steps you could take to move to the next level. Those are no obligation that's there, right? We'd love to talk to you about that. So that's one. The other one is go to leadhelm.com, our website. Okay. Sign up for our monthly newsletter. You get all kinds of educational content. You'll also see uh, some of our past trainings uh, recorded. You can have access to those things. You'll get invitations to uh, future trainings and so forth. So that's, again, no commitment, no charge. Leadhelm.com for the monthly newsletter. It's awesome. Uh, and then the third one, if you just want to have a chit chat, you got questions about anything that we talked about today, need some clarification, just want some general information, Aaron's uh cell number and email address are right there in the chat feel free to reach out we've got any number of people on the team but because aaron's here and you see his pretty face today we figured we'd put his his contact info up there so at least you're talking to somebody that you know uh at, at that point so um with that again it's fun to do this you can tell aaron and i get excited because we see the potential and i think even more fun is we see dealers start to engage and, and improve and we see them start to realize and capture some of that potential. And that's really gratifying for them and certainly for us. So that's, that's super cool. So um, if we can help you in any way, we'd love to do that. Thanks for your time today and everyone have a lovely rest of your afternoon and finish out the month strong, right? We got, uh, we got six days. All right. Thanks everybody.